What is up guys, from Sea to Stone here, and in this episode I'll be showing you some very effective ways of increasing your auto flower yields. I'll cover three main subjects which will ensure that you're starting your grow off the right way, as well as take a closer look at some of the many different strains that I currently have running this season. I'm also going to be announcing some very exciting news at the end of the video, so make sure you guys stick around. Last week I tackled a pretty devastating equipment malfunction and I also fed my ladies for the very first time. Well, the hard work is already starting to pay off, not only are my plants now happy and healthy, but I've seen some very explosive growth, maybe some of the fastest I've witnessed with autos yet. In my main 4x8 tent I'm running exclusively auto flowers, 3 strains in total. Every plant I currently have is just over 2 weeks old now. The Pink Panama Autos by Mephisto had a pretty slow start to life, taking almost 36 hours longer to germinate. To my surprise, all but one has quickly bounced back and they've now already caught back up to the rest. One plant in specific is being very finicky. She is by far the smallest plant out of all of my grows and her pheno seems reluctant to grow. I almost gave up on her but decided to give her a fighting chance. Although she is small and slightly mutated, I will flower her out regardless. The Hubba Bubba Haze has been one of the fastest propagated auto strains that I've seen so far, and by far the largest that I've seen at week 2, but their genetics do have some downsides. One plant has shown some very nasty mutations, and another even mutated to the point where it actually topped itself. The last strain that I have running in here is OG Kush Autos by Seedsman Seed Bank. Nothing too special to see, but overall all their phenos appear to be very well rounded and growing at an even and consistent rate. No early mutations and development seems to be proceeding smoothly. In my budget tent I have two CBD cream and cheese photos which are absolutely loving life. The fact their tent didn't encounter any equipment malfunctions like my main tent did meant these ladies remained in a perfect environment and were left to grow unaffected by any drastic temp or humidity swings. In fact, this one pheno is the largest plant that I've ever personally seen at week 2. Now I've grown autos almost exclusively up to this point, I've tried various different methods for growing them, and I'll share what I've personally found to provide the best results. I do want to note that there are many different ways of growing auto flowers. I'm not saying that my method is the best way, but just trying to share my experience with what I've learned so far. The first tip I'd like to talk about is one you should factor in before starting your grow, and that is choosing the right pot size for your pot plants. I've tried 3.5 gallon pots and had great success, but found that my plants did become slightly root bound by the end of their life cycle. This isn't a major drawback, but it does cause some slight stress and also means you'll have to water more often. I've also tried 7 gallon fabric pots and although I had some amazing yields, I did notice that they were far too big to allow for proper root development considering autos typically finish pretty fast. And that's why I've now stuck with 5 gallon pots, specifically ones that are taller than they are wide. I never transplant my autos as the transplant shock can cost you some much needed vegetative growth and that is why I always plant my seeds directly into the pots that I plan to finish in. The increased height of the pots allow for a longer main taproot and I also find that 5 gallon pots provide the perfect amount of room for autos to develop a solid root ball without being too restricted or having too much space. I've had a few of you ask me why I switched from fabric pots back to regular pots and it's mainly because I'm still just testing out which I like more. I haven't done enough direct comparisons myself to solidify my personal preference. The next big tip that I have is finding a good light schedule for auto flowers. I've tested numerous light schedules but I've found that having my lights on 24-7 from seed to harvest provides me the best results with autos. You see, cannabis is a C3 plant, which means it can absorb carbon dioxide during periods of light for photosynthesis. This essentially removes any need for a dark cycle, although most autos nowadays are bred with ruderalis into their genes in order to cause them to flower automatically, autos originally came from the northern hemisphere where they were exposed to nearly 24 hours of light per day. So if you want to talk about what's actually more natural for an auto flower, 24 hours of light would be the answer. Now this would apply specifically to auto flowers. Although you can veg a photo under 24 hours of light, which is what I do, you do still need to introduce at least 12 hours of darkness per day in order to properly induce flowering. 
The last little side note that I have in regards to lights is to make sure that you have yours hanging from the proper height. My Optic 8 has angular lenses which beams light directly down into a 4x4 footprint and during veg is suggested to be 4 feet above the canopy. My ES300s are recommended to hang between 4 to 3 feet as well. In my budget tent I'm running a Mars Hydro SP250 and they suggest vegging at 24 inches above the canopy. You can find more info about your lights and the suggested hanging heights by visiting the manufacturer's website. The last and probably most important tip in regards to auto flowers is low stress training, which exposes covered growth sites to direct light which can increase the amount of tops a plant can produce. I've taught my autos before but with the stress the plant endures, I think low stress training is the better route for autos and can achieve the exact same if not better results than topping. Although topping is a much easier way to manage your plant size while increasing the number of tops, one of the most important factors when growing auto flowers is exposing them to the smallest amounts of stress as possible as they do not get the recovery time they need in order to properly bounce back. The first step to low stress training should be done around weeks 2 to 3. Once the plants are about 4 to 6 inches tall, I start by drilling some holes into the side of my pot so I can pass my wire through and secure it to the edges. You can also use tape as well. The next step is to carefully bend the plant over and pull it towards the side of the pot. Next you need to gently pass the wire around the main stem and then secure it back over to the edge of the pot. You only want to create a single bend to start. Week by week, day by day, you will need to adjust the training in order to properly manage it. Here's an example of what my main stem will look like with the proper training. I first pull the main stem towards the edge of the pot, and then slowly over time, I'll bend the main stalk to run along the outside of the pots, creating a circular spiral shape. I'll be giving you guys an in-depth look into my methods of low-stress training this season. That means I'll be covering every single bend and tie down to show you guys how I achieve beautifully even canopies and loads of big fat nugs. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to do so now if you'd like to follow along. And that's it guys, although I'll be covering more ways to increase yields, grow denser buds, and other helpful tips, these are just some of the main methods that I've found to be very effective when growing autos. If you guys have any tips that you personally use, I'd love to hear about them, so make sure to drop a comment and let everyone know what you like to do. All products that I personally use will be linked in the video's description as well. I do have a huge announcement for everyone that I'm really excited about. Over the past year, I've brought together a very awesome community of growers and smokers alike, but up to this point, Point, all the interaction has mainly been between myself and the viewer. Although building a solid platform here on YouTube is an amazing accomplishment, I've always dreamt about creating a community in which everyone can talk together. Well, today is that day. I'd like to invite you all to the official From Seed to Stone Discord server. This will be a useful and free tool that people can use if they're having issues in their garden and need to reach out to others for some help. You can also swap ideas on different methods and post pictures of how your garden is doing. You'll find me and an awesome team of moderators that can help get you sorted and point you in the right direction. You can visit the website from your computer's browser or even download an app to your PC or smartphone for a better experience. I'll also be hosting live Q&As on Discord once a month, which I'll announce on my social media platforms. Come dive into a community full of supportive and like-minded people who want nothing but to help you and see your garden strive. I'll link the Discord server in a pinned comment and also in the video's description as well. I would like to thank our most recent patrons, Ray L, Eric S, Scott C, Kai, Frank S, Phil Sue, Darren W, GR Craze, Bree, and finally, another Frank. Thank you guys for your help and taking the extra step to support the channel. If you want to get access to a ton of exclusive content, including a weekly grow series, get one-on-one -on -one help with growing from yours truly, access to an exclusive Discord channel for patrons, and a lot more, visit the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash from sea to stone. I hope to see you guys on Discord, and I will certainly be seeing you next week for another video. As always, guys, happy growing.